doses. Self help from the hip. Small doses. We're talking that shit. Small doses. And keeping it real. Small doses. With me and them seals. It's so funky. <laughs> All right, so Thank let's you. do it. Hold, let me, where's my kid, the audience? All right, audience, this is y'all already know. Is it on? It's is it on. on, honey? Is this thing recording? It's recording. What's up, YouTube land, Twitter land, Instagram, Snapchat, Brown the Scruff, BGC Jack, Facebook Periscope, and last but not least, every single one of my Christian Mingle, the lands all across the land. This is your girl T.S. Madison, and I am coming to you loud, live, and always and forever in color from Small Doses Podcast with Amanda C. The Dun -dun -dun. boss. <laughs> <laughs> the We're boss. here. You see it. Girl. Even Jordy wants in because they already know. Yeah. So, girl, here's the gag, right? So, when we first came in, my sister told me, because I love Amanda. I've been, I've been, I was Amanda's fan for a long time. And you know, the last time I, I told you, I was always a fan of yours. But when you gathered Caitlyn... <laughs> Like when, a ponytail. Baby, when you gather her like a very thin, tiny ponytail, <laughs> when you pull her together, I was like, see, now this is my type of girl <laughs> right here. Because I needed a woman to pull pull her because she needs her her cap peel back a time or two. You a know? time or and two. And a time or two, I need my, my cap peel back. No, sister, really, because I'm I'm not perfect. You might need an edge snatch, I but a cap edge. peel back is excessive. Oh, I, I probably need some edge control. That's it. Some edge control. That's it. That's, Just that's a that's quick little. Edge, ooh, ooh. Ooh, I'm not, ooh, okay. That's it. All right. And I feel like you're the kind of person that does that for yourself, anyway. Yes, because I don't. I don't think that I'm perfect, and I don't think I'm above uh, reproach. And I like there are things that I'm still learning. And I love the fact that the the the, the going title of this show is uh, side effects. Side effects. Living out loud. Living out loud. When and, we were trying to come up with like, what do we want to talk to you about? Like, we were touching on different things. I was like, you know what? T.S. be living out loud. Yes. Which is not something that most people do. And the ones who may think they can do, sometimes realize in real time, they ain't cut. They ain't cut forward. And they don't, they don't get it. And then, you know, it's crazy. When you live out loud, you've been a star for since a kid. And you living out loud. Me, I've been a star since some other stuff. But... But people don't understand, like, people will clout you. Oh, my Ooh. God. They will yes. clout you for friends. They'll clout you for relationships. They'll just clout you for likes. For likes and stuff. And, like, they will do these things. And, like, you you could be with a person. You could really want to genuinely be in like or in love with this with a person. And they'll be doing that shit for the come up for they, like, all right, let me let me get my... But what always blows my mind is that it it don't even necessarily be for like some big come up. No. Like I will never forget finding out that these two chicks were just my friends, be my friends because they wanted to, because they didn't have to wait in line to get in the club. And I found this out because they were talking to people that they didn't know were my people, people. And I got a call on the side like, hey, you know, so and so and so and so. Yeah. And I was like, yeah. And they was like. They meant your people. Nah. They in here talking about they only hang out with you to get in the club. In the club. And I'm just like. Did you go over there and beat them up? <laughs> no, but they did not get in the club with me next time. Right. They, they were left in. outside of the door. Right. Clamoring, clamoring, clamoring. <laughs> Meet me at the club. Wait, you can't. <laughs> <laughs> what? You can't. <laughs> it's not going down. It's actually up and it's stuck. Sister, but I'm telling you, it is so crazy like what people do. Like, you know what I'm saying? And like. The magnitude of the star that you are, and the magnitude of the star that so that I see so many other people are, and 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 the little bit of stuff that I get, I just, I, it's hard, and I don't think people understand how overwhelming it is. It's a burden. Like my yes, it's a burden. That's the word. It's a burden because you can't live any other way no. and be true to yourself. Oh. <laughs> and it's like your circle has to get so tight. You know how when they tell you when you're young, you got a bunch of friends. When you get older, they get. <laughs> The circle has to be like, you got to turn around and you got to turn around. And that's the <laughs> that's only it. people. That's it. And then you got to keep your eye on them. It's, How many people you see here working with me? Right. How many people you see with me? <laughs> you see my, my you see my glam and my people. That's, that's it. I don't genuinely understand how people actually do feel safe with the entourage. Because it feels like the more people that are there, like the more problems, the more liability. The more liability. Somebody will run down to the tabloids on you on if you left a sock on the ground. 
girl. Let me tell you about, about, about the bottom of her socks, girl. Like, that's a messy, dirty, dirty. You're like, girl, what? girl, I just, you didn't tell the people that I just pulled my shoe out and stepped on the ground and the dirt got out from just then, nope. you know? And I, I, I'm glad we're about talking about this you. because there was something that, that I got, I didn't get a hot water for it, but I got a little, I got some positive feedback and then some negative feedback. Mm-hmm. Um, because I was talking about there was a there was a trans woman um that was on a podcast. I don't really know her name, and, I, and I'm not attacking her. You know, you I already see you putting on. You don't got to do none of that. Like, say what you want to say. Well, I ain't attacking her, and I, I'm not reading her or whatever. I'm just talking in in, in general because there's, there's a lot of people to do. And she's talking about her experience, her her sexual encounter she had with Kevin Gates. And I made a post, and my post specifically stated, like, you know, if you're you know, not if you're a woman, because as a trans woman, you are a woman, but it's just like, why would you try to sensationalize your sexual encounter? You know, because when you go to the public as a trans person and you start saying, oh, I had sex with this rapper. I had sex with this celebrity. I had sex with this, with this one. You go forth and you start doing stuff like that, you know, and then then the, the, the context of it's you're trans, then it becomes... About your transhood being the weapon in the conversation. Because that's what the people that are in the in the, on the blogs are gonna 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 see. Like they're gonna be like. But that, was it even was it framed that way? It sounds like it was framed that way. Well, like no, it was what, a gotcha. Well, so what it was is that she was having a conversation. She was like, "Yeah, girl, I got something. You know, I'm saying, you know, Kevin Gates took me out, and yeah, 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 you know, yeah, 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 yeah. and he started, and then like he's like, yo, um." Uh, yeah, uh, he said, yeah, wait, you know, what is this? He said, is, 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 are you trans? He, she said he asked her. Like based on her anatomy. Yeah, like he was, he asked her, like, are you trans? And then she's like, uh, yeah. And you did that and all the black, the, the social climate that we're in right now with the, with the, with the trans community. Yeah. Especially my trans women of color. I'm yes. sorry, I don't have a problem with I. No, but it's like all lives matter and black lives matter. It's like, yes, all trans lives matter. We must acknowledge that black trans women are under attack exponentially in a greater way. That's it. You said it. And so, ma'am, the black blogs picked this up. The black blogs. And they picked it up because she's trans. Right. If if, if he had just... If he had just the white, like they wouldn't have picked it up. Yeah, they probably picked it up and it'd be like, oh yeah, that's the white. Yeah. But it's a groupie, like it's just. Yeah, but it's now it's you're trans and you didn't tell him until he started your your. And then you're like, oh uh, yeah, and then you you say he continued to do it, and so so it's, what are people upset about? Well, because I said that, how can you call yourself a woman and then you sensationalize, you know, the trans part, the trans, like, so mm. said, cause you know, some of the trans people saying that I was invalid. They said two things. One, I was invalidating her being trans. I mean, being a, being a woman. No, I'm not invalidating that. You know, I'm just talking about the sensationalized part of it. Okay. That's one. And then two, um, they were saying that maybe Madison, how can the girls go for it? Like, like cis women, how can they go for it and, and tell their stories and nobody you know scrutinize them and i'm like you're, you're missing the picture then they were saying madison you're taking up your whole you're you're taking up for the dl man i'm like no bro i don't give a fuck about the dl man i don't care about the dl man i don't care what i'm worried about is it brings on more violence right yeah and if no one could see that i'm like well what are you well because we're still in a an untrans friendly world right so even though they're right, like the girls who are cisgendered can say whatever. And it, and, and by the way, they're attacked too. Yeah. <laughs> like it's not like the girl, it's not like cisgender women are talking about men and it's like, oh, good job, girl. It's like, why are you running your mouth? You will, yeah. you will flew that, et cetera. So there's that. But it's also just the reality that like we are not in a trans friendly world. And unfortunately, there's how things should be and how things are. Right. And we're continuously bridging and working to build that bridge. A but that, that I don't think that bridge, I don't think that move necessarily bridges that. No, I don't either. And so me as a as a living out loud trans mm-hmm. person who is very vocal about sh- stuff well, like that's that. That's the thing, too. You're very outwardly like I am trans. That's it. I know I'm not female. I don't need a person to tell me about biology. I know when I go to the bathroom because I'm, I'm a preoperative 
transsexual. So I have not had the SRS and I don't want it. I was going to say, from what I remember you saying, you was like, oh, I'm good. I'm good. I'm 45 years old. If you, if you ain't going to hit that, you don't need to hit my. <laughs> you don't need to. I mean, the first time I met you, we were in an audition. Yeah. And you let all of us know. Oh, I still got my. God, that's right. Because I, I, I want you to know that I'm comfortable. Cause I think you were the first trans person. I, I think you were the first outwardly trans person I met. Yeah, we was we was working on the show. Uh, we were auditioning for a show. show. Yeah, but I, now that I think that I honestly, I'm sure, of course, that I have met other trans people, but, but just, they wasn't outwardly outwardly no. saying it. Uh, and here's the thing: I'm a very com like Beyonce. You know, I hate. Oh God, I have this. This one of my flexes, but whatever. Comfortable in my skin. I was comfortable in my skin. I'm good. Like I don't. I'm good. Like I, I don't. What likes me likes me. What don't don't. Mm -hmm. And I'm all right with that. But. When we get into, I'm very nervous about because I I used to walk the streets. I'm, I I used to be into the secular life. I'm not in that anymore. God has blessed me to use the gift of me to make the the living that I make. And then when I see this going on, there's still dis disenfranchised girls. There's still girls out there that's hustling. There's still like this gets dangerous. Mm -hmm. A man will kill you yes. because of his fragile masculine. He will love you on you on you and he will murder you because and then what's the what's the backup well girl you know they don't be telling them they don't be telling them them they don't and i'm like bro not a lot of us i would say 80 percent of us tell the men that we're trans it's, it's especially in this climate now because I, f I feel like i've always been told and i want to also say like this conversation is not all about this but since we're here yeah there's to me, there's still a learning. There's a growth process that's happening and it's happening in beautiful ways. Yeah. Right. Because there are conversations that just weren't able to have any space to be had. But then there's also feelings like you can't ask questions because you don't want to ask the wrong question and then it be misinterpreted. So I want to make sure that I ask the right question is because I feel like I've always been told that it is actually unacceptable to expect a trans person to identify that they are trans to a partner before they are physically involved. involved. Okay, so here, in your opinion, in my opinion, I don't think that you should walk around like everybody's not as open as me. I get, sure. I get it, and I don't think that you should walk around with ah, "I'm trans" on your head. Okay, and yeah. if you're at in a club or at a bar and a man is talking to you, and you know. He's trying to get to know you. I think that the the time that you should disclose that you're trans is like before any sex sex happens. Because let's say he's talking to you and you know the it's everything is going well and and then you know or 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 everything is not going well. I should say like let's say something don't go right. Now he's he can use you. Yeah, you're trans like and going you out betrayed. like oh that's a trans that's a tra yeah. The bad word, the T word. There's mm -hmm. a tranny. That's a this. A, that's a he. She. That's a man. You know, because they do that. Yes. So, the, so, you know, it could go wrong. I just think that it's it's prior to the sexual encounter for me. I think that's when when you get down to get real intimate in it. Like that's when you should really really disclose. I'm gonna disclose up front. Me. Me. I think for some people the idea is like this is not my identity. So why do I have to lead with this? Like this is a part of me, but it is not all of me. Right. And but I then understand that. And th but then, right. It's like, I understand that. There's also just kind of like. For safety safe reasons. For safety reasons, yeah. you know. So, I mean, I get it. I'm, I'm, I'm in a, a, a bit of a pickle with that. Because we were, for lack of a better term, pickle. <laughs> <laughs> but I think that if you're trans. And you're out and you're dating and you meet a person, a man, a gentleman, whatever, whoever in the world, because it's because it's they're trans men, too. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And you meet a person out and, you know, you're, you're getting to know them. I do think that early is better than later. But I don't think that you should just lead in like, hey, y'all, I'm trans unless that's you. Unless that's, unless that's who you unless, are, because that's who I am. Hey, y'all, I'm trans. Yeah. Cause I don't need all the other stuff. Cause you gonna, say, you not. But that's just how it is for me. I don't need to lead you down the road of <laughs> then. Then I'm over here. God, he's such a good man. He's so he's so sweet. He, I want to see that real raw because I tell ladies this all the time that 
I get to see the unfiltered man. The man that they meet later on after the, when the divorce comes. I get to meet that man at the door. Well, because the other part of it, too, is that there just is a reality that people are deceptive in general. Yeah. People do not lead with like who they really are. Right. Right. And so if you're leading with your heart forward, but then you have this piece of you that you are keeping to yourself, but they're not necessarily leading with their heart forward. They're leading with whatever they feel like they need to do to fuck you. Do you know how many men Ooh. I wish that I could have got a warning for, for like, ma'am, this gonna do this he gonna do that he gonna do this it's it's i would have definitely left it at high but i think that there's something to be said for and this is even greater for for trans women there's something to be said for like you get to a certain age and you just live out loud in general because you are like i don't want to deal with the fake you yeah i want to see how the real you is reacting to the real me right and that saves all of us time yeah and so I think there's that's like a whole other level I'm, I can imagine if you are a trans person because this is also a world that is very much like, oh, now you're that? Oh, now we can't. Yeah, now you. we can't fuck with you. But I think for safety reasons, you know, I don't think that you should walk around with trans on your head. But it's it's up to your disc to your discretion because you, you have to deal with the the repercussions of, of whatever happens. Yeah. But my thing with that Kevin Gates situation is just like, girl, bro, sus. Whatever, ma'am, girl, this is a place in a black block. We are already in a bad space in the black. There is a huge divide. And huge. it's really like deep, deep, deep divide. Deep. It's deep and wide. Trust. And, and that talk, doesn't help. No. And she's not going to be dealt with by the black box. No. Because if it was a black trans woman, oh they, oh God, they'd have been, they'd they have want a picture, uh, 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 kill her, yeah. <laughs> you kill your team, witch hunt, yes, you, get your pitchforks, get your pitchforks, burn it down. Kevin Gates is a man. You, you deceived him. Mm. All of y'all do is deceive, and that's what you all do. And it's like, lady, you mm. sat here and you, and I was so, I'm gonna be honest. I was so mad when I sat and watched it because I was like, do you not see what's going on in the world? Like right now, like these people are making laws to terrorize us. Do you not see what the is going on? And this type of like, these, like, the, like black, the black vote matters. Say it again. The black vote matters. All the black votes. All of them. <laughs> and so a black person seeing a person in Congress or Senate, whatever, running, and their campaign slogan is "Kill the trans, yeah. burn the the f or whatever it is," and they see that at the top of the bill, but they don't see all the 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 the, the little writing, the fine that, print, the fine print that also affects them. Right. Well, you're gonna press that vote for. I'm gonna vote you in because because he that person is running on some stuff. They they got my back because I don't like them trans either, and you just voted both of us away. Yes. And that's my whole campaign. Like, girl, this stuff be at the top. You don't see that this is at the top. And you, the but you are included in the bottom. Yes. Like, but I think that is um, part of why you are so needed as someone who lives out loud, because you'll say the things. Right. You'll say the thing like even though there are people that came at you for this that disagreed with you, I think ultimately your your point of view is holistic and it is not simply just dogging her, but it's considering how everybody factors in to the big picture of this. Yes. All the trans, all the black people like, bro, it's, it's crazy. Do you not see what's going? Have you not wake woke up and saw the news or was you just getting your by Kevin Gates? So to pivot. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Were you always someone who was like this? Like, were you always an exuberant, like, big mouth, big voice person? Yeah, I was. I used to get a lot of whoopings because I said everything I felt. I would get a whooping all the time. I, you can't say that. <laughs> Wop, boop. You can't, I would always get whoopings because I just said it. Cause I felt it, and it's just like, and I would, and and I, and I'm a person that always went back and checked myself. Sometimes I, ooh, 
Mm. Maybe I said too much. Maybe I said too much, or maybe I said it the wrong way. Right, 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 right. Like it was the truth, but it's but the it wrong, didn't have to it cut. Didn't, it like didn't have that. to do that. I didn't have to do that. So y'all forgive me for that. Shit. I'm sorry, but I meant what I said. There's that because you you're like that. Yes. <laughs> like I meant it. I could have said it with a bit more honey. But girl, I see you are deaf. That's why I love you because you're that way. Like you, you eat, but you. I understand where you're eating from. I get where you're coming from. Like, like you might go in harsh. You might go in with a pitchfork. You didn't mean to stab him that deep, but you want to just get their attention. Yes. Like, bro, do you not see why I'm stabbing you because this house is on fire? I need you to come put the fire out. Yes. Not add to it. You get me. I do. That's why I love you too. I love you. I always have. I always have. Girl, I'm telling you, when you gathered that to Caitlyn Jenner, who I, for every moment, feels needs to be gathered up. You know, cause she, she is like, well, I think she's an op I and do I don't too. mean, and I don't mean pre-op or post-op. I don't either. She's <laughs> a op. I think she's an op and I think ultimately. A plant. Yes. Like. I think she was put in place to undermine the work that so many of y'all have been doing. And it's like the black folks, the, it's, she's, she's the trans version of a coon. She's a troon. Yeah, she's a Candace Owen. <laughs> she's a troon. I don't know who that is. Um, I don't know her. I don't know her. But Caitlyn Jenner, she is a troon. Uh, I don't. I don't know her. But sister, do you see what I'm saying? So you get why I feel the way I feel. Like, bro, why are you, ma'am? That is it, it, people are very. Um, People at this point, the internet has made it so that everyone really feels like they're just talking to themselves, I feel a lot of times. And I can tell you, like, as someone who lives out loud, it took some time for me to realize that I'm talking into my phone and I'm in my house by myself and I'm blah, 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 blah. But people who are receiving this, I'm in their house and they're just receiving me talking solely to them. Mm -hmm. And so it created this persona for me that I didn't even intend to mm -hmm. because they were like, a man is always angry. A man is always yelling. I mean, because when I'm upset about something, I'm just talking to my phone and then they think I'm talking to them. And so literally when I got to the real, it became this whole thing like, oh, Amanda's confrontational. I was like, when y'all see me confrontational with somebody? Oh, uh, because they saw you just expressing how you feel. <laughs> like, people, and I'm like, I'm not talking to a get, person. I'm talking, I'm just, I'm just <laughs> opening up my phone. Yeah. That's the same thing way with me. Like I would open up my whole career is built off of me opening up my phone, just just expressing the way I feel. Yes, you receive from the antenna. Yeah, like these are antennas. Yeah, and here you and go. And there you go. And like I'm not talking to one person in particular. I'm like picking up. You know, you just vent into your phone. Yes, because you it's so it's it's in you, and. You it's just supposed to be it out, out of you. And you're not really mad at nobody. you just like, you know what? <laughs> it's passion. It's, I'm so sick of this that's going on. Like, you're not mad. You just... Well, you care. You, yeah. You that's care. what it is. It's caring. It's love. It's represented in this way. And also, like, at a certain point, you start to learn that like anger presents in a number of different ways. And when it's like that, it's fear. Because mm -hmm. you're like, this is really where we at? Yes. Ooh. Oh, that's makes me so mad and I get so mad at stuff like that's outside of trans stuff like I get mad at stuff like like black people what, what? we you know I love us what? but I what? I want I wish we loved us, us. <laughs> <laughs> yes Jordy please you love me, don't you? Jordy you loves T.S. Love me. You love me. Here, get, get your dog. <laughs> Eat it up. Don't start it. Don't, don't oh, start it. Okay. Now, nah, see? Come on. Come on. Come here. Now, nah, see? Tear it up. He's going to... He, come here. Kill the Riddick. Come here, please. Please. <laughs> come on. Lie down. Lie down. No, I really... I wish we loved us. Yeah, man. When we talk about, um, you know, reparations, like I feel like there's so many people who would get in the way of reparations because they're like, you don't deserve reparations. You don't deserve reparations. And I'm like, why is what? So my <laughs> comment to that is I always feel that certain black people don't want uh, rights. They want privilege. They want to move the white man over to do exactly what the white man has been doing. They want to have the authority to do that. <laughs> I watch it with television programming. 
Name an example. Well, there's lots of television programming <laughs> out right now. And I love that a lot of things are black owned and black operated, but also we have to deprogram black people from How do I I like I like when I tell y'all what you know. <laughs> Cuz I know what you're talking we about. We have to deprogram black people from liking Okay, it's good that everybody makes a million dollars. They don't actually make a million dollars. There's that part. They don't. The come up is not zero to 100 real quick. So it's just that they're quantifying fame as collateral. And it's that. it's not. You see me doing them. You see, you see me doing them with Sophia <laughs> oh, Rock. I sat in that jail. Oh, I'm not. I sat in that jail. I'm about to be about to that rot. Mm. You see me. But sister, you also hear me and you feel me. I do feel you because like, that's the real. You got to. Like, you have to unprogram. Our souls are 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 sold for cheap swap meet prices. I'm not gonna be on. I'm sorry. Maybe I won't be on television long all the time. I'm not busting you in the head with no bot on TV. My, I did not mm -mm. work for three years because it had got so popping. All of the reality TV was the only thing. And these agents was like, if you're not willing to act crazy or be hypersexual, you can't work. Like that was the that was what I was told. Like, you're not gonna work. And I was like, but I'm a poet. They're like, don't nobody want no poetry. Take that crap. I mean, it's just, and we're still in it. I mean, I told Mona Scott to her face, you're a villain. I told her to her face, you're about, a villain. What about Zeus Network? I don't even know about Zeus Network. What's happening at Zeus Network? I, I mean, the cray, the cray the Sean and, and the, yeah. the blue face. Yeah. yeah. The crew face. I mean, listen, I, I give them, I, I, I respect and, and a, a, <clears throat> I respect and I give them their props <laughs> for being black owned, black operated. But there has to be, and I, and I watched an interview with, with uh, the CEO, is it Lemuel? 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 Okay. I watched an interview with him he did on Fox Soul, you know, and uh, he was saying that, that he has created content that black people don't pay attention to. Like he said, they don't like. And I'm like, well, you got to force it. So that's the part. I really feel like it's a cop out when we say like, this is the content that like black people don't. So for I'm a I'm an example, right? Like, I'm not going to make that. But as an independent creator, I also have to support myself through my creativity. Right. So we have to sometimes tweak and hone and move things around to find the way that we can most authentically connect with our audience mm -hmm. without insulting our audience, right? right? And that isn't necessarily the easiest thing to do, mm. but it just requires some effort. And I feel like that's what really boils down to. Like, folks don't want to spend the money to figure that out. They'd rather just say, you know what, screw it. Let's just give it's them boring. That's let's boring. give them the Hennessy. Let's yeah, just give them the boring. Hennessy. It's boring. And now it was just like set cameras up, fight. That's easier. And they will tell themselves, well, that's what they want. We're just giving them what they want. Well, that's the same argument that drug dealers make, right? I mean, they gonna do it from somebody else. They're gonna smoke it from somebody else. Well, if none of y'all was here, they wouldn't, because they wouldn't even have the option. Right. So again. I personally, you know, feel like that black people, certain black people, they don't want rights. They want privilege because if you can sit in that seat and you can be the puppeteer, that, that's great. You don't want to be puppeted, but as long as you're the puppeteer and then you get in those places and you're like, uh, you know what? We don't want any of that trans stuff over there. We don't want any of that, that gay stuff. We don't need to learn about any of that. We don't need any of that. They don't, they history too. Well, that was weird when, when the, uh, when the Satan down in Florida, right. Was like, okay, I'm gonna put a kibosh on this African American history AP course. Mm -hmm. And then word got out that there was a, a line item that just said, you know, LGBT, queer studies mm -hmm. within the African American historical experience. That was enough for so many black people to be like, oh, well, then he, he gotta cut it out. He, you're right. He was right. We can't have the black gays. I'm like, without the black gays. Huh? Speak on it. We wouldn't have had the March on Washington. We wouldn't have had Langston Hughes. We wouldn't have Audre Lorde. We wouldn't have a lot of the hip hop because a lot of these rappers is gay too. Oh. We wouldn't have fashion. Okay? We wouldn't have a lot of the AAVE that we are all utilizing. So I, 
I think it's very, uh, it's, a, it's an exercise in cognitive dissonance to think that you could just simply excise an entire part of our community <laughs> and say they don't deserve to be spoken about when you are studying a cumulative history and analysis of the African-American contribution to this nation. You can't do it. And it leads right back to me saying that at the top of the bill, that's anti. It goes. It, see how it. See how it rolls. That's right a perfect. Back? Yes. Right. At the top of the bill. So y'all like, was willing to cut off your nose to spite your, your faces, face. mm -hmm. and say, you know what? If they was going to talk about the gay folks in the class, and they don't need the class altogether. So you just okay. So if I get this straight, you'd rather them not talk about you or you or us or them at all if they was going to talk about this group. What? We do ourselves, and it goes back to you saying, to us saying, black folks, I wish we loved us. <laughs> I do, us. us. Because we, we are so often um, the most offended at people who live out loud. Like I was watching Tennessee, um, the Tennessee State House, of course, Tennessee has made it their mission to undermine the existence and make it incredibly difficult to live as a trans person, as a drag queen, et cetera, within the state of Tennessee. And so. And Mississippi. And Mississippi. And Texas. I mean, we can go. And on. Arkansas. So there's these two congressmen uh, in Tennessee State of Representatives that are very much, and I'm like, and they are not for play. Right. Okay. And they're like, listen, we not going to let this go down. Like we're fighting. Like this is the way it needs to happen. We're going to not like be quiet about this. We're going to keep our voices raised, et cetera. And what ends up happening is that you have two elders in the, uh, two black elders in the house who tell them you need to, you need to have some decorum. Y'all need to be quiet. Y'all are doing too much. And I'm just, I'm, I'm like, when are, when are we going to actually acknowledge like the world that we're actually living in? What, 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 what is the version of, of Tennessee that y'all are in where black people need to be quiet? Right. We need to be as loud as possible. And I think when I hear people say things like, you know, we be loud for everybody else, but everybody else don't be loud for us. That's a hard one for me. I don't think that we're loud for everybody else. I think black people in general, particularly in America, have a special connection to injustice. Mm -hmm. And we just don't with it. Mm -hmm. We And so we're loud about it. Mm -hmm. But when I look at you, how do you feel like being this person that you are how do you feel like that has hindered you? How do you feel that has helped you? Well, one, you know, the louder you are, the more of a, a, like a, target. a target, like you are a target. And like, you know, you get targeted for things like everything that I say. Like sometimes I'm not just, I'm just expressing myself on my page. Mm -hmm. Yes. On, right. In, in my your space. space. My, in my space. And they'll take my stuff and then they'll, since they will sensationalize it. You know, the shade room does that to me a lot. I had to ask the shade room to stop posting me. I mean, I say ask, but it was a demand. <laughs> they, 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 they do that to me a lot. And it's like, you know the audience that you have. Mm -hmm. And you know if I say something like this, what it's going to incite. And you know that my words are very much, you know, I'm for my people. I'm for my black people. I'm for my trans people. I'm for my people. Yeah. And you know that this stuff is sensitive. Yes. You don't post anything, any movie I'm in, any show, any play, any you don't post any of that. So you have these people thinking that I'm 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 looking for clout. Yes. Like you like this is all you've invested your time yeah. in is waiting for you to say something that Shade Room will pick up. Right. When you don't post any of the things that I'm actually doing in the world. There are people that think I am an Instagram video maker. Girl. <laughs> when, by the way, I don't make money from Instagram. <laughs> Hold up, y'all. I need to tell you about this. May 18th, Los Angeles at the Novo Downtown LA. A variety comedy game show. 
for the culture. Smart funny yet? Good evening, beautiful black people. We never get to see a space where we're celebrating positive images. That poor. Is this the part where we gotta be intelligent? Yes. Get your tickets at amandaseals.com. They trying to shut blackness down, but baby, we gonna be lifting it up. Smart funny. Okay, now back to the show. Hey, Maddie. But they think that you you are Instagram content creator. But that's because like spaces like that, like they will diminish you into this little mm -hmm. box. Mm -hmm and not acknowledge the great things that you're doing, the ways that you're contributing to culture, or the ways that you're contributing to society. Like, And I feel like that's such a disservice to their viewership too. Yes, it is. Again, it's privilege, <sighs> not rights, it's privilege. How could you own a black space that commands a black audience and then you, you, you don't uplift the black, black the way it should be uplifted? Now, if you paid them. Oh, hey. <clears throat> right. Because hey. there's definitely been folks on there that I'm like, who the f is you? Because <laughs> I done Googled and it's like, who the f is little, little potato chip? Who is that? <laughs> they salty. Well, who, who that? What song little potato but I, chip? But, I'm, but little potato chip is on my timeline All every up day. And Just a crunch it. Crunch it, crunch it, crunch it, crunch it. Little potato chip got a new song out. It's called Lays It Down. <laughs> With a B-side, no the ripples. With lays it down, no ripples, <laughs> no ridges. No ridges. <laughs> yeah. I, I feel like even though there may be a hindrance for you particularly in mm. living out loud, um, you have been successful in like... Maneuvering through spaces that and, and, and reaching those that want to here i wasn't even gonna say that but sister here's the thing if you can get one person that it's like a virus if i can reach and change not change because i'm not trying to change i'm just trying to give you the open but by the way speaking of virus you can also listen to the first time that t.s madison was on small doses and it was side effects of covid19 oh baby because <laughs> we was in the house <laughs> we outside that we outside we outside we outside. You know. No, but, but what I was gonna say though, but to put a pin, but we're gonna come. I want to tell you though, you have a you have a gift of alchemy because you can turn Wait, she said I'm a witch. <laughs> if you if you want to take it that way. No. Don't let my mom see that because she's probably thinking I'm over here doing Whoa. I mean, listen. Shut up, Mo. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> well, you have the gift of being able to turn things into what you need them to be. You know, I feel like that's something that you learn how to do when you live out loud mm -hmm. or else you are just like beat down, beat down, beat down. So you have to think like, how do I take this and actually turn it into something positive? They're trying to twist it. They're trying to tar darken and tarnish. But how do I use this as an opportunity for me to educate? How do I use this as an opportunity for me to, you know, kind of inspire some different types of thoughts? Because to your point, you don't need a million people. Okay. You just need quality. And that disperses because one thing that will happen you see your influence girl i see your influence hmm. <laughs> you don't think i see you talking then other things sprout up and i'm like now now y'all know that startup you know that girl was over there whooping about this and now y'all over here doing it kind of like the way they do us black folks on tiktok right yeah <laughs> like you know we you know how to do it <laughs> That's J Lo job, <laughs> girl. And now y'all, oh not oh now all y'all, all right. Y'all just like the Puerto Rican, Rickon. I hear Rick Puerto Rican so much. It's, it's only a few people tag me, but I'm like, you don't know that that's my voice all up and through there. Listen, I started seeing people say, okay, polka dots. I started seeing people say, oh, you know, black women know how to give compliments. We just look at you and say what we see on you. I said that sounds so familiar and listen i'm not saying that that isn't something that any of us haven't noticed of course but i stood on a stage and i turned it into content and i turned it into a craft and delivered it so then when you come after and do that well it it looks like you stole my package yeah <laughs> i see you on the ring this is plagiarism you know but you know it's but here's the thing that's part of living out loud. It's a though. part of living out loud that, that things will be taken from you yeah. and, and you won't get the credit for it. 
It'll be taken from you. Do you get flattered when you see that though? Do you turn it into flattery? I've, I've le- I'm learning to do that. I'm learning to do that. In pro- we I'm, are in process. Yeah. Me too. I'm learning. I'm learning. Because at first I said, you, what my lawyer, did we train my uh-huh. <laughs> How dare you? Did you yes. train my, and then when we, when, when they finally let, <clears throat> I'm not going to read, but I'm just going to say something. You know, I'm out here because I'm, I'm, um, I was, I was at the Glad Awards. Okay. And the movie that I'm in, Bros, won a Glad Media Award. Oh, okay. Yeah. And um, Billy Eichner? No. Yeah, Billy Eichner. Billy Eichner. Yeah, yeah. Yes. Mm-hmm. And so I was a, I'm a presenter this year. Fab. Yeah, Glad has been going on for 34 years. This is my first time. And are you supposed to be proud of that? Because that's what folks like to do. They like to be like, oh, wow. It's my first time. When I when I did my special on HBO, I was only the second black woman to have a stand up comedy special in ten years, and people were like, "Oh!" And I was like, "This nah, is uh-uh. you, you know what you gotta say? Why? Why? This is not prideful; it's shameful." Right. Here's the thing, too. I'm also the first black transgender woman to ever executive produce and star in her own reality television series. Oh, there was something. I know it was called. <laughs> Okay, <laughs> but I was happy about that. But I also was like, why? Yeah. At this point, when you break a barrier from a place of just blackness, it's like you feel good, but then you really are like, why? Have these, and people will tell you like, why do y'all need more? Why are y'all, why are you just happy with what y'all got? And it's like, because if there's still barriers needing to be broken down, then we don't have enough. Right. There's that. And, and it's not like the barrier is being broken by a flood either. It's you. Pushing, <laughs> pushing. And then here's a, here's another thing. You know what happens when you get be the first? Oh, I ain't supporting that because they don't look like me. I ain't, no, I'm nobody. I'm, this boy, this stuff is boring. This is tired. I ain't f- with that. From your own people. Because of the haters? They're just being haters? Well, it's just because, you know. And what what really, what, <laughs> that, that, that answers your question, why? Because when the support supposed to come from where they expect it to come from, it don't. And once they see stuff like that, they make it difficult for others to come because they they rested on the back of one yep and that's what our people have not grasped yet the reason why we don't see an influx of because when the one happens you turn your back on it i was on the now i'm I'm glad i'm here to address this i was on the red carpet at glad okay whoever this black person is at access hollywood I think they were LGBT, black, black kind of stout, bald, whatever. Oh, I just um, I was just talking about his face the other day. Um, hold on, Kev, Kev, Kevin. I don't uh, know his name. I didn't. I never know. I'm gonna have it. To, I'm gonna have it for you in two point two. Hold if on. If you show me a picture. Yep. Uh, what's his name? What's the black guy name? Jeremiah at uh. It's a black man at Access Hollywood. Let me just put black Access Hollywood black man. Black host. There it is. Access Hollywood. I, don't, I hope we ain't talking about the same one. I hope. God, please don't let it be. Was he good to you? No. Hmm. It was very much so, uh, you know, when I went to walk, you know how you walk the carpet to do press? Yes. You know, they do these things like this. Oh. Like they're busy doing something else. Wow. Until the white girl comes up and like, oh my God, I'm so happy to see you. Ah. I was like, and I looked over there and, and other people in the press is like, wow. You know, who I, who I started to impress with going down the line, but they were very much so like. I'm going to have it for you in 2.2 seconds. It was very much so like I didn't exist. Now, what do you think that was attributed to? How much of that do you think is like him being transphobic? No, I think it's just like people just like, oh, I don't, I don't, they don't. A lot of people don't like the way that you rose to your stardom. Kevin Frazier. Let me see him. 
Is he kind of stout? Uh, yes. Mm, is he gay? I don't know. I don't know. It's, it may not be him. It may not. I don't know. Okay. Because he had done an interview with, um, when that Karen, when that, uh, what's her name? Uh, Sharon Osbourne situation happened at the top and she was showing her whole racist. He did this like very softball interview with her where he made her feel safe and then tagged me in it. And we had to have an aside and we had, and I, and I, I, I scathed Why do him. black men make white women feel safe? I like to think that it must be in the DNA because it's, I know a lot of black men that don't, but I know that it is a very common occurrence that they're like, <gasps> Dun, 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 dun. Let a, me cape, save him. a cape is pulled out from nowhere. Right. I got to save Miss Seeley. Yeah. No, not Miss Seeley, Miss Sally. Miss I got Sally. to save Miss Sally. Sally. He <laughs> is in love with you. <laughs> but sister, so I don't want to know if it's... Okay, so if it, so okay, Kevin, you're off the hook this time. Well, I don't got to well, come for you this I don't time. Know, I don't know if it's here cuz I know it was he's a so Anyway, but the but So it, he turned his back and 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 act as if you do and and my my glam person looked at we looked at each other you know there's those mm -hmm. you know those talks so we looked at you like girl you see that mm -hmm. and i'm not going to tell you a, a bit of lie that stuff hurts when it comes from your people you news media people that are black you you news media people that are lgbtq whatever how many of the letters is in that you that stuff hurts because it's not many of us walking down that carpet. And how dare you take that moment mm -hmm. to... To diminish me. Yeah. And I slide right over here and, and white folks. There oh, you God, T.S., I love you. You know, And I'm like, bro, this is... Bro, this is crazy. I hear you. I, you know, but I, I, I commend you though, because well, one, you're vocal about your hurt. And I think that's a testament to you living out loud, right? Yeah. Like there is nothing arrogant about this. I'm not hurt that you didn't interview me. I'm hurt that you're black and you did that. It's not about me being on Access Hollywood because I don't give a f because somebody from, X one of them white from Access Hollywood will hit me and uh, communicate with me. So I don't, it's, it's just, a, it's you. And you. It's you. You're black and you do this. And, you, and I think he's gay. He's Listen, gay, he's gay. when I got kicked out of the black Emmys party, like if I had got kicked out of any other Emmys party, I would have been like, I can't believe these white people kicked me out of this party. When I got kicked out of the black Emmys party by a black woman for the sole reason of I don't like you, even though I've not done anything to you, that hurt me internally. So you feel me? 1,000%. Like that hurt me in a way that I was not prepared for. Yeah. Because then it feels like, well, this was supposed to be home and kick, getting kicked out of your house is very different than getting kicked out of someone else's house. Correct. And it's like you, I walked out and I walked and that was the start of the press. And so what did you do from that point forward? Like, did you gather yourself? I, I had to. It took me a second. But when I got to the black media, to the rest of the black media that was down, because you know they... It starts out. Yep, yep. And yep. the black media was down this way. You know how it goes. I know how it goes. And For so, y'all who don't know how it goes. Right. So and the black media is down this way. So I'm and and every the other black media embraced. It was like, Good. yes, I love you. Good. And I had to share with them. I had to thank them. I thanked them and I gave them the longer interviews. There you go. I gave them the longer interviews. I praised them for who for who did. I thanked them for their existence for for, you know, doing this because you don't know that that I was and I talked about him down there. I said whoever that so whenever y'all see the press, they may have the bleeps and stuff. Whoever that fat down there <laughs> and access Hollywood, uh, Hollywood, whatever the one of them Hollywood, one of them white folks, who whichever one of them is down there, you tell that that I whoop his side side because I know y'all know that down there right and i didn't want to act black on these people copy right 34 years this is my first time here i didn't want to i didn't want to be i didn't want to you know what though don't even say i didn't want to act black on these people carpet because right, the way me. they act is so okay, ridiculous well, let me so re retread. that's not i didn't want right. to your over here Touché. okay i ain't want to tap on your door like you, you what's what did you give him 
I didn't want to do that. And then, and then them folks be over there like, oh, God. <laughs> Here they go. Here they go. We knew it. You started this. <laughs> they just let your Uncle Tom in at the door. The f- <laughs> <laughs> Sister, I was angry and it was not because I wanted to be on. It was like, no, you it's and- not an ego thing. So I don't want y'all out there that's watching this to be like, oh, girl, they, they didn't give her no because is she going to be. No, that ain't because of that. No. It's because I'm 34 years. You know, just because I know a lot of colored folks watch this, this program because she reaches a lot of colored folks. Just so y'all color folks can understand, right? Okay? LBGTQIA, it includes us, but at the end down there. People don't understand this. At the end. I don't know why people don't understand this, because that's always where we are. At the end down there. You didn't see how I said even the at, press. Even at the glad press. <laughs> you didn't see how I said the press. It was this right here, and then I bet white for white for white for white for white for white for white. Got all of that black down there. And Billboard was around the corner, who I love. Oh, God, I wish I'm I surprised they had Billboard around the corner. Billboard was around there, but it was at the other part of the car. Oh, God, I loved that interview I did with Billboard. I loved it. But it, it was, he was black. Okay. Celebrated me, whatever. But Billboard was way bigger than that at the beginning. They should have had that at the beginning. But, sister, I was hurt because I'm like, bro, do you, you, you mean to tell me? Just because they done gave you a piece of fried chicken? <laughs> you think you tough? You think you special? <laughs> Cause they don't move you from all the way down here. Cause they don't move you. But even in that, I I'm really like, what does that have to do with you? Sometimes a lot of the, you get my own LGBTQ people. They don't they don't they don't like how I how I rose to to being a star. Cause no no I'm a whether you like it or not I'm a star. You that whether is you, that whether is you, question whether you like it or not I'm a star and a lot of you have to be down there talking about who is this who this you don't know the question is who is you because I'm out here doing things in the world not to say that that because I'm doing things in the world and I'm better than these people but like you're not going to diminish my presence as no. being a star they love like well girl you these social media these D list celeb- okay well which which list celebrity is you but what is their issue with how like well the issue be is because I'm I'm loud live loud black trans woman who say what the f- and also because I've done adult films and things and I and you know loudly and I'm loud about the things that I have done like because I'm not going to let you hold that over hold a skeleton over me and be like well girl you know since she out there since you out there doing pitch movies for new NBC Universal do they know you doing this no yeah. they don't got to do yeah they know because I told them <laughs> listen People have a problem with the way you rise because they don't want to get up. <laughs> Talk to them. People have a problem with the way you rise because they don't want to get up or they don't know how to get up. I got up by being my self. Same. That's it. You've built an entire multimedia empire at this point, right? You are doing a number of different things yes. based on your point of view. That is what living out loud has been for you. I think it's more than just living out loud in your sexuality, living out loud in your gender. It's just living out loud as yourself. As myself. As myself. Unapologetic. I don't give a d- if you don't like because I, I did adult films. I had to eat. And the, the sis, if don't be mad at me. Be mad at the system because I wanted to get up and go to work every day. Right. But I couldn't go. I'm 45. So, you know, 30 years ago, 20 years ago, 25 years ago, they went, it's, it was worse than it is now. No, don't come in here with that. No, you can't come here like that. You're going to offend everybody else around you. I don't give a d- about the people. <laughs> Let me get my job. <laughs> so where are you right now in your... Like self love journey. Oh, I love me. I, I love me because you know, I, I, I'm gonna share something very personal with you. I had got into a relationship with a person that uh, turned out to be a narcissist, and I didn't know what a narcissist a narcissist is is. 
until I ran across, and I don't know how the spirit made me run across the video. And I was like, oh my God, I was checking down the list. Like, oh, yeah. Oh, 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 oh. And then I, cause I was doubting myself. I was going through like, like, like what? Yeah, you, you trying to have all these people, these ain't even on my level. And I'm Got you questioning. Questioning. And it was a lot of like emotionally not there. And it was like, like well, where was this the person that I and met? The pull and the, yeah. Where was this person? Where was this person I Where'd met? Where they go? Where he at? And then that, when I'm looking at it, like the, when they, when it broke it down, it's like this person never existed. Nope. And so I had asked myself, like, why did that happen to me in the place of my life? Even oh God, so I'm finna give you the tea. Give me the tea. Even when the Beyonce stuff came out, like that was supposed to be a happy, happy, happy high moment for me. Mm -hmm. I was dealing with that. Isn't that what they do? They somehow manage to suck the joy out of the spaces that you have created for yourself. I was dealing with that. When I was doing, when when the movie Bros was coming out and I was doing all my press run and press stuff, I was dealing with that. And so how did you deal with it? Because, you know, that that's not. No, it's not. Easy. Like people think like, oh, well, you out here smiling. So everything is all good. It's like, well, that's just that's the job. That's the job. It wasn't. It was you go to your hotel room and you you sit on your, on your sofa. You're like, well, what, how the f did I let myself with as confident and strong as you are? Like, how the f did I let myself get into this? How did you? <gasps> I know we did that to you. But you want to know the answer to that question, right? Don't you? And what you think I'm about to do is tell you that you got to go to the Patreon to catch it. But no, no, that's not what I'm going to do. No, this time we're going to give you the rest of that question and more when we come back next week with Side Effects of Living Out Loud Part 2 with the great and awesome T.S. Madison.